Praise God for that wonderful song, one of my favorites. And so um, I, I, I receive it as a gift from the Lord. Thank you, Narissa and Ina, for blessing me. This morning, I, I invite you to, in this world of so much news that's taking place all around us, news about what's going on in this country and in this world. I invite you to think with me on this subject, a new news network. A new news network. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of all of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength, my rock, and my redeemer. Amen. I am old enough to remember growing up in a television era when we enjoy the broad, the wide, and the extensive range of choices of watching the news on only three networks, CBS, NBC, and ABC, just three. And I'm also old enough, Ina, to remember that you couldn't catch the news on these three networks at just any hour. No, we, we, we were given the news about the nation and the world only for one half hour each week. And back then, Narissa, your limited choices of receiving the news came from only a handful of men, namely Walter Conkright of CBS Evening News, John Ch Chancellor and David Brinkley of NBC Nightly News, or Harry Reasoner and Peter Jennings of the ABC World News Tonight. All white men back then as a young black boy, Reverend Caton, I watched every night the evening news, looking at no one who looked like me on those three networks until Max Robinson showed up, until Carol Simpson appeared, until Gwen Eiffel took her seat, and until Lester Holt and a few others arrived. In my coming of age, there were but three news networks. And then, G-Man, cable news came. And with cable news, two unimaginable phenomena occurred. First, Brother Nathan, the news increased from just three to 40 or more news networks now existing and operating in this country. And then second, with the cable news, the time format for providing news went, from over, went overnight from, from an evening half hour to now news being provided all day, nonstop, and around the clock. The 24 hours cable news network is now a dime a dozen. Whether it's CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, Headline News, Bloomberg, or any of the many other news outlets, they are all hour by hour and all day long reporting the same news but sometimes interpreting it and telling it in different ways and from different perspectives. We know, Jordan, for instance, that the same news reported from Fox News may not be told the same way that CNN or MSNBC will tell it. And yet it's the same news they're reporting. But then there are a few networks that seem to be existing in another reality because they are often reporting alternative news. It's as though they are reporting news from another planet or universe. 
I was reading, Omari, I was reading in the New York Times the other day of this fairly new news network. I'm not going to mention the name, but it's not Fox. It's, it, it's, a, it's a newer news network that is far, far right and a network that is a passionately pro number 45 network. So much so that even today, even today, four weeks after the election, this network still refuses to call the election for our new president-elect. Mind you, they call themselves a news network, and yet they are in denial. And they are keeping their faithful viewers in denial of an election result that the rest of the world, including Fox News, have concluded as a done deal, complete, conclusive, definitive, and it is what it is. With the 40 plus news, work, news networks reporting the same news 24 hours a day, one might conclude, Veronica, quite, quite understandably that, that, that maybe we have too many news networks. And, and perhaps the, the appropriate question of the hour should be is, is there a need for all these news networks? Do we need any more? Yes, we do. He answers, just one more. Yes, there is a need uh, yet for another news network in these days, he would insist. That, that's what he would say to us, Dexter, because that's what the prophet Isaiah said in so many words to his 8th century world of reporters who were the faithful people of God. Go down with me on this road with your uh, theological ima imagination about Isaiah's world of news. Because Isaiah lived in a world where there was news of so much happening. He was a prophet to an ancient Israel that in a short period of time underwent vast and deep changes within and without. We know today about changes. We know what changes are. But the changes that the ancient Israelite endured would make our changes seem like a peaceful and calm Sunday picnic. Yes, we, we, we may have endured four years of news about a number 45. But the news in ancient Israel involved a whole line of 45s. We may have seen the worst of corruption in the highest office in one or several of our rulers, but the news in ancient Israel was about some of the most corrupted, wicked, and evil kings, one after another, after another, after another. From, from King Rehoboam to, to King Abijah, from, from, from King Jerom to King Azariah, from, from King Joash, to King Ahaz, and then Manasseh, and so on and so on. Israel's news was about a never-ending reign and horror of egotistical, narcissistic, depraved, and immoral rulers who made news about their persecuting and killing those who opposed them who made news about their rewarding and pardoning friends who were loyal to them. Does that sound familiar? And who made news about caring little, if nothing at all, about those who were suffering and who were left without. And then on top of the news of, of Israel's internal heaviness was the news of threats and harms waged against Israel coming from the outside. News of powerful nations like Assyria that invaded and, and ravaged the northern kingdom of Israel. And then news of Babylon eventually raiding and, and sieging Jerusalem and the entire southern kingdom of Judah and leading to the destruction of the temple, the burning of the city walls, and the forced deportation and exile of many Israelites. 
So with all these epic proportion, terrifying and troubling news taking place on every hand, many Israelites had lost much hope. They had seen no bright days and they could see no light at the end of their tunnel. The news of the day in ancient Israel was so bleak that the prophet Isaiah described the Israelites in his ninth chapter as a people walking in darkness. Yes, living in a land of deep darkness. In his 22nd chapter, Isaiah depicted Israel as a nation whose towns were full of commotion, whose cities were full of tumult and reverie, whose people wept bitterly. Yes, who wept and well and tore out their hair in complete despair, surrendering all hope and saying to one another, come, let us eat and drink today, for tomorrow we will die. But then the prophet Isaiah began a new news network. Somebody say a new news network. A network whose mission would not be to discourage the people with bad news about greedy and callous presidents, but that will encourage the people with good news about the great and caring Prince of Peace. He began a new news network that, that would not heavily grieve or burden or dishearten the Israelites about their misdoings and shortcomings, but a new news work whose purpose was to ease their grief, console them and reassure them and lift up their spirit that their better days through the Lord has come. At the outset, of his 40th chapter that Licentio Omari read, we see Isaiah dispatching his team of reporters all throughout injured Jerusalem, telling them to go out and report what thus said the Lord. Yes, reporters, Isaiah in so many words says, go out and, and don't be corrupt, but, but go out and, and don't be cruel to the people, but go out and don't be cold-hearted, but go out and comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service had been completed, that her sin had been paid for, and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Yes, go out and report the news from the Lord. But, 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 but as you go out, Isaiah told his team of reporters, make sure you remember three things. Three things. First, as you go out, make sure folks hear this good news. Make sure they hear this good news. In verse 9 of this 40th chapter, Isaiah instructed them, you who bring good news to Zion, make sure they hear you by, by your even going up on a high mountain. You who bring news, good news to Jerusalem, make sure they hear you by, by your lifting up your voice with a shout. Yes, lift it up. Do not be afraid. He says, and tell them that here is your God. In these days that we're living in church, there's enough bad news to, to discourage and trouble any soul. In these days when much, if not most of the news reported from the news networks are bad and sad and never glad, it's no wonder that, that many people are today drifting into deep despair from day to day, living but seeing nothing to live for. And one of the reasons that folks are slowly but surely giving up 
is because they have not heard that there is good news. They have not heard loud and clear the good news from God's news networks, which are the churches, and from God's uh, reporters, which are the believers. They, 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 they have not heard that, that, that their Savior, their deliverer, their healer, their way maker, their miracle worker, their promise keeper, their light in the darkness, whose name is Jesus, has come. People who are living in all types of misery, whose hearts are shattered, who are living in bondage and see no light, have not heard loud and clear that this Jesus has come to proclaim good news to the poor. He's come to bind the brokenhearted. He's come to proclaim freedom for the captives. He's come to release from darkness those who are prisoners. Church, we've got we've to come out of our huts and molds. And we've got to find our high mountains. High mountains, meaning reporting the, news, the good news where people can hear us. Our high mountains, where we can be heard louder than the noises of this pathetic world. High mountains. That wherever the Spirit sends us, where we would not ordinarily go on our own. And when we get to those mountains, we are to lift up our voices with a shout. Yes, lift them up. Lift them up and do not be afraid. And report to the sinners that they too, just like us sinners, can re receive the pardoning of their sins. They can receive the cleansing of their right unrighteousness and the saving grace of the one who is called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And this leads us to our second thing that Isaiah told his team of reporters, and he tells us as reporters of this gospel to always remember, and that is that not only are we to make sure that folks hear this good news about this ruler? But second, make sure they know that he is the truest ruler of all rulers. Scripture says, see, in verse 10, it says, see, the sovereign Lord comes with power and he rules with a mighty arm. Yes, we, we may have hope today for our nation with the new inauguration of a new president. And yes, we celebrate the swearing in of our new vice president, hallelujah. We, we believe that they have the right hearts. We believe that they deeply care for those left behind. We believe that the two of them are compassionate and that the two of them are both committed uh, to change for the good and for real justice on every hand. But church, with all of their good and admirable and inspiring traits, and with us believing that they are indeed the right team for the right time, the truth still is that they are not Jesus. They might be full of goodwill and goodness, but they're not the God of grace. They may be extraordinary uh, in empathy and love, but they are not the everlasting Lord. They are but humble servants raised up by the holy and the sovereign one for such a time as this to do his liberating and just work. That's the truth and the good news. But the truest good news is that if we keep our new vice, our new president and our new vice president, if we keep them lifted up in our habitual prayers and not on some high peak pedestal, then they will do the work of the almighty God, of the son of the most high God and the Lord Jesus Christ who still reigns. Go out to a hurting people and report the good news, we're told. 
And as we report the news, make sure to remember to do three things. First, make sure folks hear the good news. Second, in these times of transitions from one ruler to the next ruler, make sure they know who is the truest and the greatest ruler. And then third and finally, make sure folks know that this ever mighty ruler to come yet comes to lovingly shepherd them. Yes, report to the folks who've been hurting long enough. Folks who have been oppressed long enough. Folks who have been abandoned and left behind and left out long enough. Folks who have been left unprotected for the wolves of this world to devour them. Make sure they know that this Jesus comes to shepherd them. Isaiah says in his 11th verse that he tends, he tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and he carries them close to his heart. And he gently leads those that have young. Yes, report, church. Report, Charles Street, to the overlooked and the forgotten lambs of this world that unlike the many rulers of this world, this Jesus, the sovereign one, comes yet as a gentle shepherd. He comes to shepherd them, not to shame or shun them. He comes to tend to them, not to take from them. He comes to love them, not to lord over them. He comes to comfort them with his hands and not to crush them with his heels. He comes to stay awake and watch over them and never to stray away and wander from them. He comes to be their bond and never their burden. He comes to take them to his bosom and never turn his back. He comes that they might be supplied life and have it abundantly and never suffer loss and lose it all. He comes that they may gain victory and not for them to live in vain. He comes for them and not as so much for him. The people of this world, the people all around you, the people in your very midst, they need to hear this great news intended for them. They're weary, they're worn out, they're weighted from listening to too much of the same old bad news of this world being provided from the too many news networks. Too many of them, church. And yet we need another, a new news network that reports of the good and great news that Jesus has come. And hallelujah, he comes again. And this network, church, is always looking for reporters. Won't you be one? So take your assignment, take your beat, and go out and report this good news. Amen. We wonder today if there is one who needs to hear this good news one who, whose lives are filled some time every evening from turning on your cable from one channel to another and just getting nothing but more and more good news, more and more bad news, more and more bad news, more and more bad news. And you need to hear good news. And so we report to you today, we who report being charged, being sent from a new news network. That this Jesus comes, and he comes with good and great news. He comes to deliver you. He comes to save you into the loving presence of Almighty God. If you're here today and you need to hear that good news, 
you can now receive that good news. Don't, don't, turn, don't, don't, don't change your cable channel. Listen to this, this good news right now. You can receive this good news by you're now opening your heart and praying with me, Lord Jesus, I'm tired of the bad news of this world. I'm tired of always hearing from one network to another that life and the things of this world are going down. More and more each day, people suffering, dying. Yes, true news. Sad news, bad news. And God, I receive now the good news, the great news that only you and you alone can provide and can send me through Christ Jesus. I receive the good news. I receive your son, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life right now, Lord Jesus. Save me. Come into my life and live in me. Come into my life and make your way. And grace me with salvation. Grace me with the gift of eternal life. Grace me that I shall forever be known as a child of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Let God's people say, Amen. If you pray that prayer, Jesus Christ now lives in you. This is what we want you to do. And this is what we want those who are looking for a church home today. Call this number, 617-442-7770. Seven 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 zero six one seven four four two seven 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 zero. The number's on the screen. Please call and a minister, either uh, I will or Reverend Caden Nurse, one of us will get back in touch with you and receive you as a member of this church and will start you on your new journey in Christ Jesus. Even if you know the Lord, but you're looking for a new church, we welcome you and we receive you gladly as a member here at this body of believers, this body of disciples, this body of news reporters from this new news network. God bless you all. I wanna take this time to say before the benediction, certainly thank you, Narissa Smith, and thank you, Ina Jones. Oh, you two have blessed our hearts so much. We want the two of you to come back again and come back again soon. Thank you. I want to thank our band, uh, Greg Groover Jr., our saxophonist and band director, Philip Clinton Jr., our bass player, Kemet Creighton, our percussionist. And then a very special thanks to Nathan Clarence Landers, who for the past three weeks uh, stood in and uh, did a phenomenal, great, 100% plus more job uh, uh, standing in for Tyrone Sutton, who will be back with us next week. But Nathan, I want to personally thank you for blessing us. It's good to have you back at Charles Street. We're glad you were with us for these three weeks. Thank you again. Thank you, Jordan Del Pino, our sound engineer. Thank you, Renee Reed Goldsmith and Isaiah Gregory Goldsmith, our video engineers. Thank you, Reverend Caden, uh, VN Nurse Senior, and our licentiate Omari Ahrens for being our worship liturgist. And to each of you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Sharon Manning. Thank you, Lewis Hawkins. Thank you all. Thank you all. We praise God for you, and we love you, and we look forward to our continual journey as dispatched news reporters from God's new news network to go out and share the good news. And now, the benediction. Grace, peace from the Lord. Now in grace, see what's in store. May the blessings from God now rest on you forevermore. Grace, peace from the Lord. Now embrace, seize what's in store. And may the
the blessings from God now blessed on you forevermore. Amen. 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 See you next week. God bless you.